Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a very obscure mid-2000s model known as the Les Paul Vixen. Hmm, Vixen, that sounds like another one we've talked about, right? This is the little sister to the Les Paul Goddess. Just as a quick recap on the goddess, is these were essentially Les Paul standards built for women. They were just a little bit smaller, just a little bit thinner, simplified, and just meant to be kind of a bare bones rocker. But the goddess was also a beautiful series. Depending on your finish, you could get a special colored Gibson logo, and the series featured pickups with special colored windings but these were a maple top with binding with a chambered mahogany back, mahogany neck, and an ebony fretboard. But the Vixen is essentially the cheaper version of the Les Paul Goddess. So if a goddess is akin to a standard, this is more like a Les Paul special, except for it was built the same way as the goddess. It's just a little bit thinner, in this case, one and a quarter inches, and a little bit less wide. So normally you're at nine inches here, you're at eight and a half. Normally 13 inches, now you're at 12 and a half. So it's just a little bit. If you were to just pick this up and play it and not have another Les Paul around, you would probably never even realize it was a smaller guitar than regular. So it's got the same thing going on as the Goddess, except for you don't have binding and you don't have a maple top. This is just a slab of mahogany, and it is a satin finish. So that means it's a flat finish. It doesn't necessarily have any grain filler to it. It was very cheap and easy to mass produce for Gibson. But just because a satin finish is cheaper, there are many people, including me, that prefer this over a gloss finish as far as playability goes. You also have a cutaway on the back. But take a look at these inlays. That's kind of what makes these special, is they have these little diamonds. And I really can't name another Gibson that uses these inlays, so that kind of makes the Vixen series unique in that aspect. But just like the beautiful Les Paul Goddess, these were offered in some interesting finishes. So with the Goddess, you had the Rose Burst and the Purple Burst, ranging to the sky and ice, as well as black. Well, these ones, I feel like they were more geared towards little girls starting to play because the finish options for these are more playful in my opinion and more built on like a pastel palette. So we have this version, coral pink. There's a Caribbean blue, which is kind of like a baby blue color, Corona yellow, ebony, and my all-time favorite finish that I didn't even know existed until researching for this video is a red metallic. That's kind of like going for the lipstick vibe, I think. But unfortunately, just like the goddess, these things are impossible to find. Before I made a bunch of videos on the goddesses, you would only see like one or two of those things show up per year, but now you see them more often. So I'm hoping this video brings out more vixens because I have been looking for a vixen as long as I have been looking for a goddess. In fact, 
I found and documented all five goddess Les Pauls before I found a single Vixen. These are not expensive guitars. If you want a cheap series to start collecting and potentially increase in value, I would suggest trying to track down all the Vixen colors. Because as a guitar collector, it's fun to have a complete series, especially when the colors are so interesting. On the used market, you'll be looking to pay anywhere between seven to 1200, depending on your finish. Because the thing with these guys is they're so hard to come by, you kind of have to convince someone to sell. I mean, I've got this one posted at a thousand bucks. I'm not gonna take a penny less because I couldn't replace this guitar for a thousand dollars. There just aren't any for sale. So are these worth the money comparatively to other guitars that Gibson and other brands offer? No, <laughs> you're gonna pay a premium for these because they're a little bit of an obscure Gibson guitar. They have specs that very few other Gibsons have, so that might be desirable to you. But other than that, they just come in some fun flavors. It might not look like much now, but Greg's guitars on YouTube, he had one that somebody converted the black plastics to the white, and oh my gosh. That makes the guitar look so much better. If I was keeping this thing, I would do that same mod. But that's something else I wanna talk about is these always appear like a nice pastel pink color in photos, but in person, it, it's more of like a salmon color. <laughs> My guess as to why some of that is, is maybe the dark mahogany wood darkens up the finish so it's not quite a pastel pink. But that's the reason why I'm gonna call this one the salmon guitar. It's like a little fish here. <laughs> but besides being a fish guitar, there's actually a famous user of this little known series. And it's Katy Perry. Now, when I was looking for photos of goddesses originally, I ran across these photos of her with this pink vixen guitar. And I always thought that was really cool. You can also see her here with one of the blue versions. So I thought I would pay tribute to her for repping such an obscure Gibson model. So I typed in Katy Perry and I was like, oh, yep, yeah, I kissed a girl. That's probably a good song. I could make something rocky out of that. But I just accidentally stumbled upon this. The Vixen guitar is in the music video. <laughs> you might have missed it because there's a big butt on the screen right here, but it's right there. And then it's also behind the girls in like the bedroom area. But that, in my eyes, officially makes this the Katy Perry signature Les Paul. <laughs> but now that we've talked about the Vixen, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at what makes it up. All right, under the hood here, we can take a look at our pickups. They are Gibson USA stamped. That's kind of what stinks about this era of Gibson is they didn't put those little stickers to help you identify them. And everything just has Gibson USA on the back, so you can only identify them based off of ohm readings and if you tear them apart, what magnets are in them. In this case, the neck pickup reads 7.62k ohms and the bridge position is a hot 13.23, so that makes this the 490R, 498T series pickups. Construction-wise, it's very simple. It's your normal short neck tenon for a Gibson USA product. I like how you can see all these little router bits were just drilled in to make this. And you can also see the cavity for the toggle switch that just runs directly into there. And then it's really hard to see this in the bridge pickup cavity, but there is very faint markings right here that says L P V X for Les Paul Vixen. From this angle, you can see it's just a solid piece of mahogany paired with a nice rosewood fretboard, and you have a mahogany neck. Here you can see the truss rod cavity. You just have your typical gold silkscreen Gibson logo with Les Paul model on it. You have black 50 styled knobs. And these are stock with a wrap tail bridge here. You can intonate it using these screws. Obviously it's never gonna be 100% perfect cause you're just kind of playing like this, but it's usually close enough. You can see there are some identifying marks on the inside of these. It looks like 1289 and TPBR8513. That probably stands for something like tailpiece bridge because it's kind of doing the job of both. 
backside of the guitar. Unlike the Goddess series, these just have regular Grovers, whereas the Goddess has the top locking Grover tuners. You've got your serial number, Made in USA stamp, slim 60s neck profile, and inside the back plate, this is really interesting. The Les Paul Goddess is like a chambered Les Paul standard. But since this is a special, I was kind of surprised when I opened it that this is a super crammed little control cavity. I mean, I've had to work on a goddess before, and it was kind of nice because the chambering made it so you at least had some room, but this, that, that's pretty crammed in there. But you've got two Gibson branded pots with all the associated wiring. And here's the inside of the toggle switch cavity. Much more spacious in comparison. This particular example weighs 7 pounds, 11.1 ounces. Now that we've seen the inside of the Vixen and learned about its history, let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds. <laughs>
Now that we know how this instrument sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This Les Paul Vixen is in very clean condition. It just has some very minor wear and tear. Face of the headstock, you're in good shape. You just have like some very minor string change scratches. Your truss rod works fine. Pretty much the only major flaw on this guitar is you can see where the headstock veneer was applied around the top of the headstock. You can kind of see that black area. I mean, that's completely natural. Nothing's separating. It's, it's just because the satin finish has started to expose that seam line. So you don't really notice that while playing it. I mean, maybe a little bit right here, but nothing to worry about. Rosewood fretboard on this one. Frets show very minor wear, hardly any at all, with your beautiful diamond inlays. The face of the guitar is in great shape. Again, you can see through to the wood grain, which kind of adds to the whole salmon vibe to this guitar because it, it's just like a piece of salmon, I guess. <laughs> Got your master volume, master tone control, and your original pickups in here with wrap tail piece. Back of the headstock, serial number 00496310. You can see you've got a little bit of edge wear to the side of the headstock. It looks like it's scuffed up against something briefly. But other than the previously mentioned veneer lines, everything else is looking good here. Got a nice slim 60s neck profile. I don't see any major impression marks on there. And the back of the guitar is also in great shape. And same story as the front. You can see through to the wood grain. On the side here, you can just barely start to see the neck join line, which is also very common. And you've got just some very light play wear along the edges. We're coming up on a spot where there is a very small impression along the edge here. And that is right here. You kind of got to hit it in the light just right. But besides that and the veneer line on the headstock, this thing, it's probably just as good of condition as it was brand new. We'll take a quick look under black light. Due to this being a satin finish, if one of these gets played at all, it'll start to wear or it'll start to turn into a glossier finish. It looks like this one might have a little bit of stand rash right there, but thankfully that's not visible under regular lighting situations. So everything's looking good along the edges. This thing has definitely not been handled too much. Once again, this looks like something stand related to me. Or maybe the finish has been rubbed in like a gig bag a little bit. But again, it's easy to wear the clear coat off of these. But thankfully the neck is looking in good shape. No breaks, cracks, or repairs. And everything's looking the way I'd want to see. All the Vixens were originally issued with gig bags. And due to their decreased body size, it can be hard to find a proper fitting case. But I have upgraded it to one of the TSA Latches SKB cases. These are some of my favorite aftermarket cases. I love the way these latches feel. So to shut them, you just simply close them like that. It's so easy. But to open them, there's just a little lever underneath them here that you just press and then it opens. You don't even have to press it, you're basically just lifting this thing up. So I love those latches. They're secure, but easy and friendly to use. But as you can see, you have five latches on this case and it's been used. It's got some scuffs and scrapes on the outside, but it does the job. The interior is black. And again, the fit isn't perfect, so I'll give you some extra bubble wrap to tighten up the fit. But it's way better than a gig bag. You also have a nice large storage compartment here and the case key if you wish to lock it. Here, I'll demonstrate the fit. Up and down, there's quite a bit of room to be desired for, but all you really need is that little bit of foam block down there and it's perfect. Because once you do that, the side to side motion will be just about perfect. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson Les Paul Vixen in the coral pink finish, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next episode. Take care.